Uh. Ooh, yeah. Drop that beat. It's time to meet DP. So, guys, welcome back to another episode of the DP and Me podcast. I'm DP, and who's me, you ask? Uh, hello everyone, and this is BioPhoenix here. Introducing it just like you always do in every video, but you know what? I love consistency. So uh, tell us about your your work there, BioPhoenix. Yeah, so um, what I do on my channel is that I mostly do uh, game reviews on a lot of really random ass games out there. Like I do a lot of like the obscure stuff. Like just for an example, like recently I did uh, a review series on the the Valus games on Turbo Graphics uh, CD. Okay, yeah, the Valus games. I'm familiar with those on, I believe it was the Super Nintendo, Genesis. I guess. Or, yeah, Genesis, yeah. Well, Super Nintendo had uh, one game. It was the fourth one, but, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah that's um, what I was thinking of. Yeah, well, it's all good, though. That's a good game. But, uh, yeah, that thing, I do a lot of stuff like that. Um, I also do a monthly pickup video thing, and, no, it's not, like, you know showing the game and that's it like i actually like give like a first impressions of the game if i've played it enough and all that kind of stuff and um also i do a once a year anime feature although i kind of stopped that though but i am going to be doing like them like every once in a while though just letting you all know for the future but yeah that's sums of what i mostly do on my channel yeah that is one thing that i find really interesting about your channel is that uh unlike most of the gaming type people i've talked to you actually do branch out a bit. You do anime, and uh, you've even done some movie stuff, have you not? Uh, not yet, but oh. I, I want to. But it's something I like. I've had in the back of my mind. I'm like, okay, I should go around to actually doing one of these things. But uh, yeah, I never did. I see. <laughs> maybe I maybe I got you mixed up with Chris. Yeah, I got you mixed up with Christopher Pico. He actually does the movie uh, tracks yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But the anime stuff that's really good. I really used to be in anime a long time ago i haven't really watched much recently like literally the most recent one i watch of course is castlevania oh yeah but I watched that that's too. that's pretty recent you know i mean that was on netflix you know i was like i love castlevania and it just looked awesome and it was actually was pretty nice i really enjoyed the way they did it you know i, I wasn't expecting that much to be honest with it uh so maybe that's why i enjoyed it so much because i just didn't expect it to be that great uh, but uh, that being said, the the last anime I watched before Castlevania was Cromartie High School. Oh, and that, I, I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, Cromartie High School is hilarious. You should look up the uh, clip they have on Trolls. It is so hilarious. I just love it. That's that's what got me to watch that anime because I saw that clip that they did on the online trolling. And it was just so wacky and hilarious, and that show is just filled with funny moments like that. But in, oh, okay. but in spite of enjoying shows like that, I just haven't been that much of an anime guy. Uh, my main peak of anime is going from like the '80s stuff. You know, I'm a big fan of stuff like Ninja Scroll, Akira. You know, that kind of stuff. I like Robotech. Uh, oh, yeah. 90s stuff, of course. You know, I'm a big fan of Cowboy Bebop. That's a really fantastic show. Uh, Outlaw yeah. Star. Um, you know, there's just all kinds of great anime shows. You know, Vampire Hunter D, of course. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> there's just so many good ones to name, but I'm just not really that familiar with the newer stuff. But uh, would you oh, say yeah. that you kind of keep up on that, or are you more old school, I guess? Um, I'd say I'm more old school, but I do kind of follow the newer stuff, but I kind of try to, like, keep it, like, like, I usually, what I do is that I usually wait until, like, a series is done, and then I just watch the whole thing. I don't, like, you know, wait for, like, a week for an episode, and then, you know, all that kind of stuff. I, I just, you know, watch it all entirely kind of thing. So you just like to binge it or something like that, I guess. Yeah, Whenever I like to binge have... watch it. Yeah, that. I mean that's kind of that's kind of funny like with the way anime was before it was uh heavily shown on TV programs and such that's kind of how you had to watch it in a way like you had to import like the movies or whatever or maybe if you had a really cool shop you might be able to buy it locally of course uh oh, but yeah. you know that being said I I remember watching certain animes like uh I don't know if you ever watched Razafon I've heard about that one Razafon's really nice. It's kind of a it's a mech style anime show. I mean, if you're into those kinds like Macross, oh, yeah. Gundam, that kind of stuff, it's it's really nice. 
But um, that was one that uh, I remember buying seasons for. You know, this was before before Netflix and all that good stuff where it made it a lot easier. No crunchy roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's enough talk about anime for now. Uh, I did want to, um, you know, I, I noticed with your channel, you've been yep. pretty consistent with the game reviews, which is really nice because if somebody wants to see game reviews, well, they can stop by your channel. You know, it's not hard. I noticed you started to uh, do a lot more live streaming. Though. I mean, what do you think about that? Yeah, that was something I forgot to mention. Uh, yeah, I, I do a lot of live streaming lately. Like, it's been something I've been really enjoying a lot. It's pretty much like doing a Let's Play, but it's more like an interactive one because, you know, I get to interact with people that come by and stuff. And also, like, a lot of the people that have been consistent, consistently watching, like, my streams have all been, like, really, like, chill people. So it's good to talk about them and just shoot the shit and whatnot. So. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, live stream is just kind of really the natural evolution of Let's Play. Because, I mean, Let's Plays are fine to watch sometimes, but, you know, it's not interactive, like you said. So the viewer doesn't really have as much of a stake in it as the uh, creator does. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that fully. And, you know, that dynamic can certainly morph it into something entirely new. Uh, whereas a Let's Play, unless you are either a really good personality or you do an excellent job of playing the game, maybe editing out parts that are kind of slow, that kind of thing. I just get bored of watching Let's Plays. I don't yeah, think, no. yeah, I don't make them personal anymore, and I don't watch them. That's just how it is. Yeah, I don't. I never really was like huge into watching Let's Plays. Like, I mean, there'd be like a couple times I'd watch like you know the first couple parts, or if it's like a game that I know really well, I'll I'll watch I'll watch it here and there. But other than that, though, yeah, I don't really watch them a whole lot. Nothing against people that do them. It's just you know, it's just not my most favorite type of video to watch, really. Right, but I mean that being said, uh, Let's pl or v reviews, they're always a thing. I mean, people are always gonna look. And find out what kind of reviews, you know, like if they see a game at a store or they see it online or something like that, maybe see it out in the wild, they might want to do a quick search on it. You never know, you know, if it's an obscure game, maybe you reviewed it, maybe you'll actually show up in the search results or something like that. I think that's a lot more wise than doing a Let's Play, because if I want to get an opinion on a game, I'd rather just watch somebody talk about it for a few minutes as opposed to watching, like, 30 minutes of gameplay or whatever, you know, trying to get an idea of if it's something worthwhile, especially if it's a longer game. I mean, certain mechanics might take a while before they even get introduced. Yeah, it's true. So, uh, well, then again, I guess some people might just prefer to just go to Metacritic, like, oh, it got a 6 out of 10, pass. <laughs> I want nothing to do with that. <laughs> yeah, 6 out of 10 is not that bad in my opinion i mean i think anything that's less than five is like yeah gotta go <laughs> right well i mean i guess if it's a game that interests you it's worth taking a risk on but i mean if yeah it's, if it's something you're kind of on the fence on you're at that point you're just like yeah i'll just go somewhere else you know oh, I'm, yeah. I'm not even gonna touch that yeah and also on the price of the game is also a thing too like mm -hmm. if it's like a full 60 dollar game and it's like yeah i don't know yeah exactly most certainly um, so anyways, I did want to bring up one particular review you did, uh, which was Destiny of an Emperor. I remember you actually credited me for making the idea of you doing that game review. And, yeah, okay. and, you requested it to me. Yeah, exactly. And you actually started it not that long after I requested, if I remember right. I mean, you probably did that review maybe a month or two later. So, I mean, like, was this a game you were even aware of? Like, whenever I talked about it, like... Did you decide, hey, you know what? I want to go ahead and check that game out. I want to see what that's all about. Or did were you already uh, aware of it? Yeah, I was already aware of it, but I didn't really play it a lot. Like, I kind of, like, dabbled with it for, like, I don't know, like, five minutes before. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But, um, um, yeah, so I was pretty much thinking, like, huh, if you assist me to do this review, then, you know, this kind of gets me more motivated to, you know, play through it and understand it more and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, I ended up uh, liking it quite a bit for what it was. I mean, obviously, it's not the best RPG ever, but, you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, 
it, it's if you're looking for an old school turn-based RPG, it's definitely worth a look for that reason. You know, I mean. But uh, anyways, let's uh, let's go ahead and wrap things up. I mean, what do you think? Can you tell me what your favorite? Like, do you have like a favorite video you've done? Maybe not like necessarily your best work. Uh, I mean, although it could be, you know, but uh, more like something that you enjoyed making the most, I guess. Something you really enjoyed making. Oh, um, I know uh, one that I uploaded, um, when was, I think it was in, I'm pretty sure it was in August, or maybe it was in July, if I remember right. It was the review I did for uh, Dragon Seed. I had a lot of fun making that one. Was that one of the anime reviews you did? No, it was, uh, it's, a ga it's a game, PS1. Oh, Dragon Seed. Okay. Was yeah. That, was that before or after you did your, like your Shadow Heart stuff? Oh, that was uh, way after. Oh, okay. Because I remember uh, that was another review of yours I remember enjoying quite a bit. I mean, I was a huge fan of uh, Shadow Hearts to Covenant. I never played the first one. Oh, yeah. No, that's another review that I also like loved fucking doing, man. Because ever since like I beat a Covenant, which I played in 2016, as soon as I finished the game, I was like, okay, I got to fucking review this shit. <laughs> Okay, so, no, yeah. it's called Dragon Seeds, not Dragon yeah. Seed. Okay, that's what yeah. threw me off, because I was looking for this review, and I was like, I can't find it. But yeah, um, if you happen to take a look at the description, wherever you're listening to this podcast, go subscribe to Bio Phoenix. Go watch that Dragon Seeds review. That um, It's one of the more recent videos. It was less than a month ago, actually, according to oh, okay. uh, your channel. And also... I would highly recommend checking out his uh, review for um, Shadow Hearts, which that was probably a little bit further along. That was probably a few months ago, at least, I imagine. But I'm pretty sure it was, um, or maybe like a year ago. It was about a year ago, I want to say, because yeah, because yeah, I beat uh, Covenant in uh, 2016. So yeah, it was about last year. Well, uh, check out Coca Cola Kid if you want a short one. That's only nine minutes. Yeah, that, that one's pretty short. Yeah. I mean, you can only do so much with a handheld Game Gear game named Coca-Cola Kid, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's personally not a bad game, though. Yeah. So, let's go ahead and talk about some games we've been playing recently. I know there's got to be one that you have to be talking about. I already know it starts with one of the last letters of the alphabet. Am I right, or have you not got this game yet? No, I got this one. It's uh, East 8 um, Wait, something, ease. something of Donna. <laughs> I always find that funny, like how it's pronounced ease, even though it's literally a Y apostrophe S. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that, but that's funny, that's... though, because I remember, like, I always called it Ys until I watched Happy Console Gamer talk about this. I'm like, ease? That's kind of weird. I. That's, is that really what it's called? <laughs> yeah, no, it was the same thing for me, because I remember I had the, like, I, I found, like, a loose copy of the Master System game years ago, and I was like, what the fuck is this game? Is this called Wise? Like, what the fuck is this shit? And then, I like, years later, I found out, it's like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, it's, it's more like, geez. Wise, oh. play the shitty game. Oh, wait, it's not actually that bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I, I, I can't get into the old ones, because that was back when they had that mechanic where you ran bump into the, the yeah enemy. bump into the enemies. I, I always hated that. But, obviously, but, they've improved it as time went on. Like, I remember uh, Ease 3 Wonders from Ease on the uh, Super Nintendo. Not really the best one by any stretch of the imagination. But that's where they kind of started, like, actually swinging the sword and whatnot. It was actually more like a traditional action RPG in that aspect. Yeah, that one played a lot like uh, Zelda 2, actually. Yeah, it certainly had its similarities. To, uh, now, that that being said, that game was not that good. I mean, it was okay, I guess, but there was definitely a lot better games back then, too. But the uh, remake that they had... Uh, yeah, Oath of, Oath of Felgana, Now, that was a really good game. I enjoyed playing that. I actually need to beat it. I'm at the very last uh, area of that game. Um, oh, good stuff. Yeah, and they, they've done a lot of remakes. Uh, they've done Mil Memories of Selketa. That's for Ease 4, right? Yep, I've beaten that one on the Vita, and it's great. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one I'd love to play, of course, but I just haven't got around to it. But uh, uh, So tell us about Ease 8. Well, Ease 8 is uh, pretty fucking great great stuff like the thing that i really like about this game is that it has uh, some really new like 
concept ideas that they never did before. Like, for an example, like, pretty much, like, you start off on a ship, the ship gets uh, wrecked, and then you get uh, stranded onto an island that's, like, mysterious and haunted and all that kind of goofy stuff. And then, uh, so then once you get to the island, you, um, like, pretty much the game turns out is that you're trying to, like, build, like, a village where you're trying to, like, rescue all, like, the on the ship with you at the beginning. You okay. know, which I think is really so interesting. So you're, you're trying to rescue the pe other people that were on the ship. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So pretty much when you, um, like, find some of the uh, castaways of the, uh, you know, the people that you're rescuing from the, the, the ship sinking, you uh, get to, um... Uh, <laughs> you, you, you get to, okay, so you get to build, like, the city, right? Yeah, yeah, you get to build, like, a city by, um, by rescuing some of the people. And it kind of borrows a lot of uh, stuff from uh, Dark Cloud, which is kind of interesting. Oh, I love Dark Cloud. Yeah, so if you like Dark Cloud, I think uh, you'll definitely dig this game because it has a lot of stuff borrowed from it. Like, like there'll be monsters that will try to attack your city and you got to play Defender and all that kind of stuff. Okay, that actually reminds me a lot of Dragon Quest Builders 2 that I played last year on the Vita. Oh, shit, eh? I never yeah. played that. Yeah, it's a really fun little game. I mean, it's pretty much like Minecraft in an action RPG format. No multiplayer, unfortunately, but they're supposed to be adding it for the sequel, so I think that's going to be awesome. Yeah, I'm, I actually kind of want to try the second one. Yeah, and they're actually going to be releasing it on the Switch, too, although I'm kind of curious, considering I imagine the second one will probably be out next year also, with the way they're talking about it. It's like, are they going to release both games in the same year on the Switch? Like, what's the point of buying the first one, then? Let's say yeah. something maybe. I don't know, but but in, nonetheless, um, that's pretty fun. But so it definitely borrows elements from that. Uh, now I noticed in Ease Eight, one thing I was not used to at all, at least from playing Oath of Felghana and, and such, you actually have party members with you. Uh, yeah, you can actually switch between different characters that you have in your party. I know uh, the fourth game had that too, actually. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm not really familiar with, like, some of the newer games. Like I said, Oath of Elgana, I've got E's Origin. I need to play that. I'll probably go ahead and play that after I beat Oath of Elgana. But uh, that being said, you know, I mean, I mean, that's kind of an interesting thing. Can you actually switch characters, or you play as Adol the whole time? You play as Adol, but you press the square button, and it switches uh, between your characters that you have that are active. Like, you have three... Uh active party members and you can switch between them and they have different um um symbols that are like for different uses like like adol is used for like just like a like a slash attack then there's heavy attack and then there's um range attack okay yeah i got you okay that's that's pretty cool um so how how much time do you think you got in this game so far uh but i think i put in about 20 hours i'm at um the fifth chapter Okay, that's not that's not a bad chunk. I mean, you're probably getting getting to the midway point at least. I'm sure. Yeah, like the game is a uh, like from what I've looked at the trophy list, it looks like it's going to be a pretty long game. And I know from chapter two and chapter three were like really freaking long, but you know, in a good way though, they were long. I gotcha. That's pretty cool. I mean, because I mean, we were playing Oath of Felghana. That was a short game. I think I only have like eight hours on my Steam list, and like I said, I'm at the very last stage. So it seems like they've been adding a lot more to these games over the times, you know. Uh, so it sounds like with the party mechanic, though, that you said you could switch the party members out. Yep. In the middle of a fight, I'm assuming. Uh, yep. Okay. So, but they, but you can't directly control them. I guess they, they just have their various abilities that they use to support you in some way, or... No, you can fully, like, walk around, jump around as them, and, um, like, when oh, you're... Okay. Like, let's just say for an example, like, if you're just using one character, the other two will just be right beside you, and they can, like, assist you attack, but you can switch to them, and then the other person will be Adol or whoever. Okay, I gotcha, because I asked you earlier if you just play as Adol or whatever, you made it sound like that you only play as him, and but you can oh. switch. That's, uh, so I just misunderstood you, I guess, or maybe, uh, maybe you didn't understand my question. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. It, but that's happens. cool that you can actually play as the other characters. That's pretty interesting. Uh, as people may not know, if you're not familiar with the E series, you play as Adol in pretty much all of them. I mean, this game could have just as easily just been called something like The Legend of Adol, except, no, you actually play as Link, not Zelda, but yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, that being said, uh, what do you think of the game so far? I mean, do you think it's worth the full ass game price? Because I was saying, I was looking at, it, I was like, this looks interesting. But then I was like, well, the Vita version is twenty bucks less. Is the PS4 version really that much worth it? I mean. Well, I got it on PS4 because I heard that uh, that the Vita version, like, it's missing a certain few things. I don't know what exactly, I just remember that's what I heard, and I was all like, oh, well, shit, I guess I should probably go for the PS4 version because, you know, it just seems like it would be, you know, better idea for that. As much mm -hmm. as I love the Vita, don't get me wrong, it's just... Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, I kind of just want a little bit more out of it. I got you. I mean, that was kind of like my rationale when it came to Dragon Quest Builders on the Vita versus PS4. I kind of looked at the two versions and kind of compared them. I was like, well, I mean, yeah, it's going to look better on the PS4 and whatnot, but it didn't seem like feature-wise that there was really any difference. In yeah, see, game. that's what I care about. It's like, if, if the graphics are smaller, but it still has the same content, like, you know, I can live with that. But if they, like, take out certain things, and, you know, that's, you know, a little unfortunate... Yeah, I mean, I guess if I was in that situation, I'd be like, well, I mean, I guess I'd probably look at what that extra content was, see if it's something that I would actually even want to attempt to engage in, you know, because it could be like a horde mode or something like that. Like, I don't know about this game having a horde mode, but no, you know, <laughs> I mean, like, would it, it would it be content that makes sense for the game? And would it be content that I'd be interested in? I guess would be a good point. But um, that being said, you know, I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying the game so far. Uh, do you have, like, a preliminary uh, score you'd like to put on it, roughly? I mean... I probably might say it is one of my favorite games that I've played this year. Like, I'd put it up there with, like, uh, Yakuza 0 and Persona 5. Like, I'm having that much fun with it. Oh, wow, that's pretty high praise. So I'm guessing we're talking in the high range, like 8 to 10 territory, I'm assuming. Yeah, about there. Yeah, I, okay. I don't really do review scores, are, yeah. so... <laughs> right, I'm just, I'm just trying to like establish it because I've done reviews before on this podcast. I like to establish those number scores just because it's an easy, simple thing to enjoy. You know, because like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, that just gives people an idea that this is definitely eight or higher. You know, like it's definitely worth checking it out if you're into those kinds of games. You know, which oh is yeah, if you're a fan of RPGs or if you're a fan of yeast games in general, then yeah, this game is definitely worth giving a go. Yeah, I'm going to have to take a look at it eventually. It's just, I mean, RPGs are a slow burn kind of genre. You know, and there's so many that come out nowadays. Like, it's just, I know, it's not like how it was in, like, Super Nintendo ga days where, like, you get, like, two per year. Yeah, unless you, uh, unless the games are coming out from Enix, they would put out, like, three a year just by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. But, uh, but that being said, you know, yeah, I, I got you. So... Now, Ease, I would love to be playing that right now, but right now, I actually just picked up Yakuza 0. They had it on oh. the uh, the sale last week for PSN yep. for thirty five ninety nine. Now, this is a game I've been looking forward to get, uh, but the price has always been high. <laughs> it's always been $60 new. I think it's been on sale before on PSN for like 45 bucks, but I was like, eh, I don't know. That's not low enough for me yet. And then... I never see it a good sale used for it. Like I even looked at uh, eBay because I figure eBay you could probably find it cheaper than a GameStop or something like that. And the cheapest listing I found was still like fifty bucks. So I'm like, well, shoot, you know, I guess I'll just wait a little bit. But then we had this PSN sale, thirty five ninety nine. Yeah, it's a digital copy, but that's the right price. So I decided, you know what? I don't think I see myself selling this game anytime soon, anyways. So I'll just go ahead and snag it, you know. But, um, and that's, of course, oh, yeah. great price, you know, now it's back up to 60. So if this is a game you're interested in, you be sure to be careful with your money. But I can tell you it's worth a full $60 if you want a uh, good beefy experience out of a game. You know, you're definitely going to get your money's worth in terms of the uh, amount of content uh, that can be said, of course. But uh, I did want to talk a little bit about it. I haven't played it much. To be honest. Yeah, I, I've beaten the game, so... So, okay, so one thing I noticed, because I, I actually started my Yakuza playing with Yakuza 4. It was a free PlayStation Plus game, I don't know, like two or three years back, something like that. And, you know, I was... I, I kind of, like, I downloaded it, you know, queued it up like I always do with any free Plus games. 
but I didn't play it for a while. Then Yakuza 5 came out, and I saw how people were talking about Yakuza 5, because I didn't really know anything about Yakuza at the time. But I saw how people were talking about Yakuza 5, and I was like, okay, well, this is interesting. And I, you know, I was like, I remember that I got Yakuza 4, you know, free on Plus. So I decided to go ahead and pop that in, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. It was a really fun and interesting game. You know, it, it is... I mean, here's the thing, like, if you're the kind of gamer that cannot stand Japanese dialogue spoken, you might have to kind of worry about that, because... Pretty much every Yakuza game has only Japanese language options for the voiceovers. Except the first. Except, well, except the very first one on PS2, but that's another story entirely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, but you have full subtitles. you got all the text you can read. You're not going to be missing out on anything as far as that. Maybe some shop signs or whatever are going to be in kanji symbols that you don't understand what they mean. But... You're going to learn by playing the game what these locations are, their significance, and everything like that. It's not it's not a huge loss, you know what I mean? It's almost like playing a game that just has cryptic symbols like Zelda. You know, just cryptic symbols, and you don't know what those symbols are, but you understand the context of those symbols and what they mean as you play through the game. Yeah, exactly. So, but uh, anyways, I enjoy this kind of game because it reminds me of... A couple of different types of games. It reminded me of Shenmue, which I was a huge fan of. Maybe not the uh, best game nowadays. You know, it's a little rough around the edges today, but it was such an innovative game, and it reminded me a lot of that. Uh, it also reminded me of like the beat 'em up games of old, like Streets of Rage and whatnot. And I just thought this was an excellent combo. What were you gonna say about that? Oh, it's a really good comparison. Um, you know, I played a lot of those like old school beat 'em ups, and yeah, that's very accurate. And uh, with Shenmue, I've only played two on the. Yeah, and yeah, I, I'd say it's a lot like it. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, you played it on the original Xbox, I'm guessing, right? Uh, yeah, I have it on Xbox. Okay, because they also had the Dreamcast one, which I remember after playing Shenmue, I was like, oh, you know what? I've got this grandiose idea. I'm going to go ahead and import the Dreamcast copy of 2 from Europe and pay $90 for it. And then I never got around to it. <laughs> but, the, but if I would have done that, that would have been the very first game I would have ever imported. But that's how big I was into Shinmu at the time. Uh, or Shinmu, whatever it's pronounced. Uh, I actually have my copy of it uh, signed by Adam Korolik. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And even though he has absolutely nothing to do with Shinmu, technically... He is, like, one of the most popular Dreamcast guys, and I was like, you know what? I'll have him sign a Dreamcast game. Why not? You know? And that's Hold one that holds great significance to him, so... Oh, yeah, well, um, I mean, if he's a big Dreamcast guy, then, yeah, I'd assume he would love Shenmue, since I know that's a very popular game on there, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's bullshit. Even though our friend Anthony, he uh, can't stand it at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but, uh, anyways, uh, that being said... Yakuza has those elements. I love those elements. And they work well together. No problems there. Um, so I, I really liked Yakuza 4. I never actually got around to beating it, but I got fairly far. And I need to get the PS3 booted up and just go ahead and finish it off sometime. But I decided at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and start playing Yakuza 0 because I didn't have any games on the back burner. I do have a couple. I'm still playing Magic of Scheherazade, but I'm getting pretty close to beating it now. Uh, nothing nothing really new to report, though, as far as that. And I also am playing Blaster Master, which I don't think I have enough time into that just yet. So I don't want to talk about that right now. That's probably going to be in a future episode. Uh, uh, which Blaster Master is it? The original or the Switch one? Yes, the original. And I'm going to probably go ahead and play the Switch one afterwards at some point. But, uh, but yeah, so... Yakuza Zero, I'm enjoying it so far. I've only got about an hour in it, but it seems like it's evolving the mechanics of what I remember from four quite well. Not to mention the graphics look better. The gameplay is definitely smoother. Full 60 frames a second. Love that. Definitely yep. very good for fighting. And uh, I, I am liking the kind of directing style that they're doing with the story so far. You know, they're not doing... Uh, there's not as straightforward as it was before. There's definitely a little more uh, going on as far as that. 
But um, anyways, can you tell me with the Yakuza 4, is there like a lot of character switching? So I remember that was one thing that happened in Yakuza 4. That uh, I'm wondering, Yakuza 0, you only play as two different characters, right? Yeah, I've I've never played 4. I've only played 0, Kiwami, 2, and 3. Okay, so you actually played 2 back on the PS2 era. Yep, I found it at EB Games years ago when they actually still had PS2 games. <laughs> so was that your introduction to the series then? Yep, that was my first uh, time playing with it, and I, was, I wasn't really sure what to expect out of it, but then when I played it, I was like, oh, this is interesting shit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, they, you say it really screwed up the marketing with the first one, because they made it seem like it was like a Japanese GTA. And other, yeah. than, like, other than like the fighting part, I guess... There's really not much to do with GTA. You got you got some fighting, some brawling, and you have a city that you can walk around in. That's where the similarities basically end. <laughs> oh, and, Pretty much. And, and, and and a crime-based story too. I guess you could stretch it out to that as well. Even if the uh, crime is completely different, you know, we're talking about crime families as opposed to individual criminals trying to make it out on their own, which is more of the Grand Theft Auto style. Yeah, more or less. But um, but yeah, that's enough Yakuza talk for now. I'm enjoying it, but I just don't have much to report, you know, right now. But yeah, I love that game, so I can definitely say it's one of my other favorite games that came out. For, the, for So far this year you're talking about? Or? Yeah, so far this year, yeah. Okay, so you've been playing anything else besides Ease? Um, I was playing a bit of Kiwami, but, uh, you know, ever since I was playing East, you know, I kind of took a little bit of a break off that. But, you know, that's another good thing with Yakuza is that it's easy to get back into if you take a break from it. Well, yeah, it, because, I mean, it is a pretty open game, but it is linear enough that it's not hard to figure out where you need to go. Plus, it does have, like, little marker objectives and whatnot, so it's like, you don't have to worry about getting lost. Yeah, it's not like saving in the middle of a field in Oblivion and be like, shit, man. <laughs> well, I mean, those games, you still had quest lists you can look at and stuff. So, I mean, that wasn't too bad. Yeah, well, that was just an example I remember, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. Uh, so, what else have you been playing? I mean, you yeah, you said Kwame. Um, oh, yeah. Um, I know recently I just finished, a, you know, some review sh- shit that i'll say right now was an nes game called uh dragon fighter dragon fighter yes i'm familiar with that game that was uh the red you you've seen the 150 one cart right the red cart yeah that uh song that plays in the menu that's from dragon fighter oh is it really yes it is oh shit i like totally forgot about that yeah that's one of the rare nes games too i think that one's like a two or three hundred dollar one or something stupid like that <laughs> Yeah, it's a three hundred dollar game. <laughs> yeah, so tell us about recently. Tell us about it. Um, yeah, like it's a game I did for a review, but I can tell you about it right here. It's it's fine. It was actually requested to me by someone else. Um, can't I can't remember how to pronounce their YouTube name though. But uh, pretty much, it's a action platformer where you play as like a barbarian guy, and he has like a dragon helmet, and you can do like projectiles and swing your sword at enemies that come at you randomly, and you can turn into a dragon and it kind of turns into a shoot 'em up It's kind of interesting. Yeah, it does sound really good. It's it's kind of crazy like where the price went on this game, though, because I was looking at the price charting information, and this was like a $20 game up until, like, I don't know, about 2012, 2013? And then, it was really? like, and then it was like a $100 game until like 2016, and now it's just been raising ever since. It's crazy. I don't know, man. That's fucked up. I actually didn't even knew it was a $20 game for that long. I, I thought it was always expensive. Yeah, it just it's really curious why the price is winning, because this is a game I never hear people talk about. Yeah, I don't, like... Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, I know it's got to be a rare game, because it was a re- late release from a small publisher and all that good stuff. You know, I mean, that, those are all recipes for disaster when it, actually, it comes to rarity. It was actually made by Natsumi, funny enough. Oh, yeah. Well, there, there's another another uh, recipe for disaster right there. If Natsumi has something to do with the game, you guarantee it's going to be rare. <laughs> yeah. Although, except Apodox for some weird reason. Yeah. Uh, I think that was because it was like a Milton Bradley published game. 
And, yeah. Uh, they, I remember seeing their games everywhere back in the day, man. Because they did, uh, they did Marble Madness, of course. You found those carts everywhere. Yep. And um, I think didn't they do like uh, one of those, like, like Captain Skyhawk or something like that? That. Uh, yeah, they also uh, did Time Lord. Yeah, yeah, those games were like common as dirt, you know, for whatever reason. But, but anyway, Dragon Fighter. So you got the barbarian dude. You got your sword. Um, yeah, and you like you can like turn into a dragon, and it like turns into like a shoot 'em up. But the stages still stay the same. It, it's it's a pretty interesting concept of an idea. Mm-hmm. Though I do think, uh, like considering how late the game was released, I you know I kind of wish there was a little bit more stuff in integrated into it there because you know it was came out like after super nintendo came out so right i don't know like like the mechanic wasn't really that innovative like they could have easily put it out in like 1988 or something like that yeah pretty much yeah. like i think like like it's like it's a good game like don't get me wrong like it is pretty fun but it's not like the best like action platformer on the system ever like uh, another game i reviewed recently was uh, moon crystal and that game i think is like a bajillion times better <laughs> oh yeah moon crystal is actually really well made um that's a game i kind of actually had it on one of my uh, pirate cards and uh, it plays pretty nice i mean it's if you're like the you know castlevania kind of games you know it's definitely worth checking out yeah man that freaking animation is like so awesome looking for that that time <laughs> yeah I, who, who did that one um it was a company called het and um Hacked. the only two games <laughs> Hacked, or oh. i don't know it's a weird name but basically the only two games i know that they made was a was like a detective game on super nintendo but unfortunately it never got translated and then they made some political simulator game hooray Oh yeah. Well, it yeah, sounds fun. <laughs> sounds like they had game ever. they've had a story tradition with those political sims, I guess. Yeah. And this was but... back then, so you're probably like making fun of like George Bush or Bill Clinton or something like that, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know. I just looked it up and I was like, huh, that's weird. I I, I remember you didn't you talk about that in your review? Yeah, I did actually. Yeah, I kind of remember that. I mean, I, I I remember watching the review. I just didn't pay attention that much because I didn't actually watch it. I was listening to it while I was washing the ditches. The ditches, washing the oh, dishes. I yeah, I was washing the ditches. The ditches they got all dirty <laughs> from all the debris that you know flood in. So I had to wash them. You know, make make sure they were nice and clean. Uh, oh. But yeah, Dragon Fighter. It's it's an interesting game, but it's it, it's a dime a dozen game. That costs a lot of dimes if you want to get the legit card. So just emulate it or find, yeah, a, find a cheap pirate card of it. You know, that's what I just say. Just play it in, in any way that you can that won't like, you know, make you dirt poor. <laughs> right. So unless you're Kevin Savage, then buy it. <laughs> oh, shit. So uh, I really haven't been playing anything else, sadly, except for one other thing. Which is completely off the wall, but we had a little um, problem at the house recently. I'm not going to really get into details with it, but needless to say, I was temporarily separated from my game systems. Except for my PlayStation Vita and my 3DS. But the Uh 3DS, the battery was dead on it, couldn't find the charger. So naturally, it went to the Vita. It would have went to the 3DS if it was charged because I need to make progress on Pokemon finally, as well as uh, Ocarina of Time. But since I didn't have it charged up, I went ahead and bust out the Vita, and I started playing the Lego Movie video game. (laughs) Oh, sweet Jesus, man. (laughs) Yeah, but you know what? I love them Lego games, man. They are good, mindless fun. Uh, But I wasn't too sure about how it would play on the Vita because it just seems like the game that is a lot more fun to play cooperatively with somebody else. You know, I think that's really what these games are designed to be. They're designed to be games that you can kind of share with a friend or share with your kid or something like that. You know, if you have kids, that kind of situation. That seems what these games are kind of geared on. Obviously, a handheld system, you can't do that. I was thinking, though, that the Vita version, oh, naturally, it'll it'll be like the 360 or PS3 versions. 
completely wrong about that. No, this is, this plays differently. Um, it actually, I, well, it it doesn't play differently. It actually plays almost the same, but it's in a completely different perspective. It's almost in an isometric perspective, which is oh. kind of weird. I'm guessing that's more like the uh, Nintendo 3DS versions, I would assume, because Nintendo 3DS, I imagine, is probably the same thing. The Vita version is probably just a nice, souped-up version of that. <laughs> I'm actually going to take a look at it real quick here and uh, see how that version looks just real quickly, because I am kind of curious how that looks. Uh, I keep seeing screenshots of the actual game and not the 3DS one. Okay, no, I'm looking at the 3DS one. Yeah, the Vita version's identical in perspective and everything like that. But obviously with the Vita version, it looks a lot nicer. You know, widescreen, so you get a little more on the screen. That kind of stuff. But it does still have some elements of the current and past gen versions as well. You know, the actual console versions. Because there are certain stages that mimic off of those, whereas the 3DS versions doesn't. So it's kind of like in between. Because it's not able to pull off, I guess, the full 3D perspective at a solid frame rate all the time. But on certain segments of the games, it can. And so I'm thinking that's why they changed it up a bit. But anyways, have you played any of these LEGO games before? Um, I played Lego Star Wars with a friend of mine back on the GameCube, and it was actually pretty good. Yeah, Lego Star Wars wasn't too bad. I remember playing that back on the Xbox 360 way back in the day. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. But, you know what, I didn't really care for the Lego games quite as much until I played Lego Lord of the Rings, which I understand this wasn't the first game of the Lego games that did this, but the Lord of the Rings one... It actually introduced the actual voice actors, or uh, oh. early, or at least good sound-alikes of them. You know, I, I'm not sure, but it actually had a clips from the movies, but in the Lego form, and it was huh. well produced. You know, this was really well done stuff, but it was done in a humorous way. Uh, oh, of course. And naturally, I mean, the Lego Movie, the Lego Batman Movie, excellent works of art, uh, as far as those are concerned. I love those kinds of kids movies. But obviously, those things kind of got born from the game versions when they started kind of amping up the game versions. But, you know, at this at this point, I had a temporary little addiction to these things because I also picked up Lego Marvel Super Heroes and Lego The Hobbit, and you know these different games. You know, because I wanted to kind of experience that uh, Lego spoof of those movies. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, and, hey, it's fun shit. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just mindless fun. You want to play something for a couple of hours that doesn't involve uh, a major investment in time or thinking. thinking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then just pop that in for a little while, you know. Or if you got a, you know, you you're got your uh, son or daughter, or you got your friend over, you know, something like that. You just pop that in. Pretty pretty good times, but uh, yeah, I've been kind of enjoying that. I think about halfway through that right now not exactly a long game it probably only take a few hours to beat so oh, probably yeah yeah but i mean if you want to you know there's a lot of extra stuff you can do there's a lot of optional things you can do so if you really wanted to you can go in there and play for several hours easily you know uh trying to play the stages in certain ways to unlock certain objectives so you can build up you know get more gold bricks the gold bricks kind of like show your actual progress unlocking things in the game Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, segue into our actual news topics now, since uh, I didn't really have a lot to game. I mean, did you have any other games you want to talk about? Or um, no, that really sums up what I've mostly been playing, pretty much. All right, that sounds pretty good. But you know what? There's something that a lot of people have been playing lately. Uh, at least if you're on Steam. Uh, last week, of course, we talked about Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Having sold 10 million copies, well, it set another record. Not that long later, it now holds the record for having the most concurrent players at the same time on Steam. It's even beat out Dota 2, which is a free-to-play game. You don't have to pay any money to play that game. 
Shit. So that's really interesting that this happened because Player Known Battlegrounds, it's a $30 game, which is twice the cost of what was the second most played game, which was Counter Strike Global Offensive. Yeah, that one's still huge. And it's not even a finished game, it's still an early access. So I just found this completely wild that this game is so popular, but I guess, it, you know, it almost seems like people saw this PewDiePie clip and they're like, oh shit, what's this game? I want to play it too. <laughs> <laughs> like he, he indirectly sold the game with that clip anyway, I guess, or something. I don't know. But still, that's that's really interesting. Have you had any experience with this game at all? Nope, I've never even like, like I only heard about it like recently. Have you seen gameplay videos or anything like that? Nope. Streams? You haven't seen nothing? Nope. Okay, so... Alright, this game is a pure PvP game. One one man takes it all. Last guy that wins, he is a winner-winner chicken dinner. Okay? Well, no, he is, but he gets he gets a chicken dinner. I yeah. imagine. I would at least imagine. I mean, it's KFC or Popeyes or whoever. You guys need to put up a promotion with this game. That would be brilliant. You know, maybe have like... <laughs> Uh, you know, a certain time of the day where if you win a player unknown battlegrounds match, you'll get a coupon for like a free five dollar meal or whatever. You know, something stupid like that. Get a free <laughs> chicken dinner. You know, it'd be a brilliant it's promotion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just have something kind of like unique like that. You know, maybe you can get that concurrent number of players even higher. You know, people playing, hopping on player unknown battlegrounds to get that free fried chicken. But. Um, <laughs> That being said, I really do enjoy the idea of this kind of game, but I am curious to see if it will be able to maintain this momentum, especially since last week, I don't know if you listened to last week's show, but Fortnite is going to have a similar mode, and they announced that that mode is going to be free to play, so there's no cost of entry to play that one. Of course, that could present its own problems. Maybe they'll have pay to win mechanics in that one, which would suck. That could hurt. Oh, definitely God. Hurt. But, I mean, if it doesn't have anything broken like that, that that, that could be the next uh, League of Legends or something like that, you know? Yeah, no, that's, um, had some crazy shies up. Yeah, which I, I am kind of curious. Since it has the most players on Steam, I wonder how that uh, compares to, say, Battle.net with Overwatch or uh, Minecraft or something like that, you know? I wonder how it compares with those. League of Legends, of course. I wonder what kind of numbers are pushing and how it's going to compare to those particular games. Yeah, I was actually going to say, like, I'm actually surprised that, like, like is Overwatch even more than, uh, what was the number, 10 million current players? I don't know if they, I don't know if they have ever announced, um, that, I think Overwatch has sold more copies overall, but yeah, that is split, old. but that is split over three platforms, whereas yeah. Player Unknown is still on just one platform, so... Um, it, I mean, if you want to combine all three platforms, yeah, maybe Overwatch still has the edge. But we are talking concurrent players still, too. You know, this the most number of players on at the same time. You yeah, know, Overwatch no, has I know been what you mean. It's been out for a year now. I'm sure it's probably not as popular as it was. Yep. So, I mean, I, th I thought that was kind of an interesting little uh, fact about that game. I'm still really curious to see what's going to happen when it comes on an Xbox One. I wonder what kind of impact it's going to have when it finally does, if they can have that kind of momentum. Yeah, it'll be very curious to see. I mean, wait, you said it was coming on Xbox, right? Yeah, and we don't know about other systems. We just know Xbox for now. They have an exclusivity deal. We don't know what the extent of that exclusivity is. No, oh, hey, at least they got something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, true that. Uh, but anyways, uh, speaking of Steam, so there's a popular practice on Steam called review bombing that people like to take part of. And basically, whenever a developer or a publisher does something really stupid, somebody says something stupid online, they have a really bad policy, they introduce microtransactions or... All kinds of other things that people don't like. People take to the Steam review service to leave a bunch of negative reviews on these games at once. This is called review bombing. And yeah, with, um, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. 
I was gonna say, like, uh, for an example, with um, with GTA Five on PC, it got like super negative reviews because one thing that they did. Right. Well. Uh, oh, well, that was like when they shut down that uh, one mod. Yeah, the mod. Yeah. I forgot what it was called. Um, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. That happened like a few months back or something like that. But yeah, but yeah you're that, talking that, like yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So that stuff happens all the time. And most recently, of course, it happened to Firewatch, which was a topic uh, previously from last week's episode. As you notice, there's a theme with a lot of things talking about last week's episode. It's because this stuff is kind of still resonating. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, that game got review bombed because of the developer's reaction to PewDiePie and how they reacted to it because people thought, you know, whether their opinion of PewDiePie was... They thought that was a really bad precedent to set, and people made that very clear that they did not like it. Well, Valve, they kind of get why people do that. They kind of get why people leave those negative reviews. They don't want to silence people. But at the same time, for consumers that don't have any kind of investment in these kind of politics, I guess you could say, maybe they just want to say, hey, is the game good or not, you know? They can yep. take a look at these new charts that Valve has now, which actually show a timeography of the reviews as they come in. Like, it gives the players an indication of when the reviews have hit and their overall impact as far as, like, positive or negative when people thought about it. I think this is a really good idea because if you don't care about certain little things like if you're not really a gamer that's in the know you'll want to know you know hey is the game good is it worth playing does it run well those kinds of things you're not really concerned about is the developer saying something bad on twitter <laughs> you know that's not something yeah. that, that's not something that really comes into your mind there and valve kind of recognizes that so they actually want to show people a chart that shows you when you know, the, the whole time frame of the positive and negative reviews a game got. So that you can kind of see if, say, for example, if a game improved over time. Or, you know, went sour over time. Maybe patches and whatnot improved or unapproved. Unapproved. Unimproved the game. So I think that's a really good thing to do. But, uh, you know, I, 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 get, I get review bombing. But it's still really dumb. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, like, uh, like I do think it is, like, like I kind of, like you said, like, I kind of get, like, why they do that, because, you know, like, you gotta speak out your opinion on certain shit, you know, that's kind of the whole point, but I know one thing with a lot of Steam reviews in general is that there's a lot of, um, you know, like, people will just put out, like, a mini-review on, on their thing of, like, a game, and it's, like, totally, like, a parody kind of thing, and it's, like, yeah, <laughs> you can't take that seriously. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, most definitely. I remember seeing a whole bunch of crazy reviews um, like that. I wish I could quote some on top of my head, but they always have, like, some kind of silly little event that happens in the game, and then they'll be, like, 10 out of 10, we'll play again or we'll buy again or something like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like something like funny, yeah. Yeah, which those are fun, but it doesn't really, like I said, it doesn't really tell people a whole lot. But then again, you have to factor in that most people that are reviewing it probably just want to give their general opinion on the game. Yeah. You know? And so that's okay, you know. I, th I think overall, with review bombing and things like that, if you guys want to talk about a developer screwing things up, talk about it. Let people know. Let them know on social media. Let them know on your YouTube channel. You know, all that good stuff. But just leave the game reviews out of it, okay? You know, I mean, if a game sucks, let us know it sucks. If it's good, let us know it's good. You know, that's what game reviews are about. It's just we want to know if the game is worth our money and time or not. Okay, so guys, it's time to do rapid fire this or that. 
This week we have Bio Phoenix, of course, and I'm going to ask him two different things he has to say this or that on, and if he doesn't say them fast enough, he gets the buzzer. Are you ready for this? Uh, yeah, I'm ready as I'll ever be. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I think this is a pretty good one to start with. Mechs or dragons? Uh, mechs. Draco or Alduin? Uh, shit. Buzzer! <laughs> ah! You know which dragon is which, right? Where they're from? Um, it's from, um, um, Skyrim, isn't it? Alduin is, yes, and Draco is from Dragonheart. Oh, okay, that, I was like, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> well, he's also technically a Harry Potter character, but... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So, which one? Um, I'll take, um, the Alduin. Okay, alright, you probably had the buzzer several times, I'm sure, by that point. But, oh, yeah. anyways, uh, let's talk about some Elder Scrolls a little bit. Uh, obviously, Alduin is from that. So, which game? Oblivion or Morrowind? Um, I'd say Oblivion. Okay, Oblivion. Good choice, good choice. I probably... You know what, I'm not really sure what I would have went with at this point. <laughs> I would have got the buzzard if I would have been asked that question. Uh, <laughs> how about this? Sauron or Saruman? Ooh, uh, Saruman. Okay, really? I mean, he's just the wizard that's kind of weird. He doesn't have all the power. I don't know, man. Uh, just... Then again, Sauron is just a freaking eyeball that stares at shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, at least Saruman's got a lot more character development going on there. Okay. And so that was Christopher Lee, if I remember right, that played as Saruman. Yeah, and Christopher Lee is fucking cool as shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, most most definitely. So let's talk about some other Chris's. Since your name also happens to be Chris, uh, yep. so let's talk about this. Uh, would you say Chris Pratt or Chris Evans? Um, uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Buzzard! <laughs> <laughs> um... Who's hotter? Come on. Chris Pratt or Chris Evans? Oh, shit. I, <laughs> actually, I don't even remember what they look like, honestly. Okay, well, Chris Pratt, Guardians of the Galaxy, Star-Lord, Chris Evans, of course, Captain America. Oh, well, I guess I would go with Chris Evans, then, because okay. I like Captain America better. All right, well, there you hear it, people. Bio Phoenix loves him some Cap America, <laughs> even though he's Canadian. Yeah, how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> There's not a Captain Canada, so I guess you have to go with something. Yep. Or I guess he could just represent North America. Captain North America. You know, he doesn't represent anybody south of uh, Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was rapid fire this or that. That was a fun little round. Uh, oh, so yeah. That's always fun, of course. What's not fun, of course, though, is Nintendo... <laughs> taking action on little indie projects that get established to do something with their IP a little bit differently, and they like to shut that shit down, if you know what I mean. But on the other side of the token, it's Nintendo. They're a multi-billion dollar company, and they got to protect their investment since Mario is pretty much what built that house. So last week, of course, I talked about the Mario 60 play. 64 multiplayer mod. Obviously, it runs off servers. Well, apparently, it's being shut down now. Now, you told me you couldn't even play this game, but you have attempted it. Yeah, I downloaded the, the stuff for it, and, you know, I had the ROM and, you know, all that kind of goofy stuff. And, yeah, when I, every time I tried connect it, it just failed and all that shit. And I was like, well, fuck this. Well, are you sure you downloaded the right one? Because I looked into some info on this, and it seems like that this was, from what I, what I understand at least, that this is not actually a new thing. I was actually looking into it afterwards, and there's been videos on YouTube of people doing multiplayer Mario 64 for the past couple of years at least. Uh, I think the one I did was pretty recent. I mean, the video that I clicked on what did come out this year, so... Okay. Yeah, so I'm just I was just kind of curious. I wonder if maybe you might have accidentally downloaded an older version of it that wasn't supported anymore or something. 
Oh, maybe that could be it. I don't know. I just remember, like, I, I looked at the, tor the tutorial that I had to do, it, and I did exactly that, and it just, like, it wouldn't connect. So I was like, ah, uh -huh. eh, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, that's really weird. I mean, it's it's tricky to do this thing sometimes. I have tried multiplayer on emulators before, like Kylera. Um, played, uh, actually, I'm, I don't know if you're familiar with WizWar 100, but me and him, we actually played all the way through the uh, Golden Axe games. Using, oh, nice. Uh, using the emulators that supported Kylera. And it worked pretty well overall. Uh, there was a few hiccups, so occasionally it would uh, kind of stutter a bit and whatnot. But it, I guess as long as you don't get bothered by occasional things, it works great. So that's one reason why I was really interested in seeing the potential of this. Because it seemed like it was not just simply adding multiplayer to something that already has it. And just make it online, but it was completely changing the way the game played uh, as far as I understand you can actually like race to get the most stars and things like that it was actually like a really interesting little competition yeah like I like the idea that it was cool it's just you know I couldn't get it to work and now it's uh, kaput yeah I'm sure they're gonna eventually find some way to uh, go around it but again again uh, you try to mess with Nintendo and you're gonna get it yeah, that seems to be a thing, and um, one thing I will say about that whole thing that I think was kind of stupid on their part was the fact that they were asking for uh, Patreons. Oh yeah, I'm sure that Nintendo was like, oh no, no, you're not going to make money off of our stuff. You know, they are probably like already prepping getting that stuff shut down, but once they saw that, they probably fast-tracked it, you know. Yeah, they it was like, nope, it. can't have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. before it was probably like, we'll just send some emails off, they'll eventually shut it down, you know. But then they probably started busting out the phone calls and threatening to have a executive visit him or something like that. <laughs> oh, God. So, uh, so at that point, yeah, they knew that their time was up. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's some crazy Japanese for you. They like to uh, do crazy things. Like, <laughs> uh, for one thing they like to do, is they like to hold game shows sometimes, like trade events for video games. Now, Aww. I know that sounds kind of sounds familiar because we do that here in the Americas and we do that in Europe also. But J Japan has its own event called the Tokyo Game Show. And there were some interesting announcements there, um, I would most certainly say. But uh, Sony kind of really softballed it on this. That being said, there was a game that you brought up when we were talking about it before, and this is yeah. one I'm really looking forward to. Shadow it's... of Colossus. Shadow of the yep. Colossus. Yep. So, now we didn't really get much out of it. We got a new reveal trailer, a little bit of info, not much else. But, um, I mean, what, what was your general thoughts on Shadow of Colossus? You ever played the original or the uh, remake on PS3? Uh, yeah, I played it both on PS2 and PS3, and okay. um, yeah, it's a it was a really great game. I liked the whole concept behind it. Also, the graphics at the time were like amazing. So you know, having this remade is like it's kind of mind blowing to think. Yeah, I mean, it was a little choppy on the PS2, but uh, it was still a pretty top notch looking game considering. Yeah. Um. I was actually kind of disappointed at the PS3 version. Like, it just it didn't seem like it was improved quite as much as I would have liked it to be. But yeah, um, like, it was still a little bit slower paced, but, like, it did it did look better, but it didn't, like, I guess you could say the frame rate of it was still the same. No, it, it was better frame rate. I noticed it was definitely a bit smoother. Like, uh, it didn't seem like it was a sluggish, at least to me. Well, to be honest, I can't really remember because it's been a while since I played the PS2 version, so... <laughs> I gotcha. And especially if you're using an emulator, you can't really... like. I, I, that's one thing about emulators. They do really do a great job of preserving the games, but at the same time, emulators, at least the way they design them, they design them to try to run the games as best as possible. And yeah. that can actually affect the experience of the game in some way because it may actually play differently... Than it originally did in those scenarios for for better or worse yeah sometimes that's true yeah i mean i know some emulators might be able to tweak it a bit to uh make it play more true to the original in terms of graphics and frame rate and things like that but um 
like when I played Star Fox on the Super Nintendo, I noticed that it definitely responded a lot better when I played it on the emulator as opposed to the card I have playing on my actual Super Nintendo. It seemed like the control was a lot better. I would assume it's probably because the emulator is actually running it at a higher frame rate. But Oh, that's probably, yeah. Even though it might be hard to tell just by looking at it, because obviously it's a game that kind of has somewhat stiff animation as it is. It's not like really fluid. So it might be hard just by looking at it, but when you're playing it, you kind of feel like a bit better response. And, uh, but this here is a full remake. This is not just a HD remaster. They are um, definitely doing a lot more with it. Yeah, it's building up from the ground up, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoy that part of it, but I'm wondering, are we going to really get anything new out of it? That's what I'm wondering about, because... I know for um, me personally, from what I know, is that there was actually a lot of stuff from the original game that was cut out due to, you know, limitations and stuff. And I'm kind of curious if they'll, like, kind of add some of that stuff in. Mm hmm Yeah, I really want to see something new, even if it's just, like, a little optional thing or something, because... I mean, they're remaking it. It's not just a remaster, so it'd be nice to have something extra. Or at, at the very least, budget price it. Don't charge more than 40 bucks. Do like Crash HD Trilogy and, and give us a fair price for it. Oh, yeah, that, that, that one was, was pretty well done. Yeah, I mean, that was a huge remake. That was of a PS1 game. That was, I mean, it's pretty much a new game, except in the gameplay department, I suppose, but... Yeah. So, um, yeah, I am looking forward to that, and I am very curious to know, like, what else they're going to do to it. I don't know. Maybe they can might have, like, little side quests that, I don't know, do sh stuff. I'm not creative enough, okay? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I really hope to see more on Shadow Colossus in the near future, but there was, of course, other stuff that happened at Tokyo Game Show. I mean, what do you, what, what do you thought about it so far? About, uh, Shadow the Colossus, right? Or about Tokyo? But Well, I mean, I guess you could talk about both, but, I mean, there really isn't much more to say about this remake, at least. Yeah, well, for Tokyo Game Show, I know one other thing that was shown already that uh, looks interesting, Left Alive. Oh, yeah, that new uh, mech game from uh, Square Enix. Yeah, um, supposedly, from what I've heard, it's supposed to be having the same setting or the same universe as uh, Front Mission. Okay, that's interesting. We haven't heard from that series in a while. Yeah, I know, so I'm like, oh wow, because I, I loved 3 on PS1. I thought that was a great tactical RPG, and, you know, mm -hmm. the fact that they haven't made another one in years is like, oh shit. Yeah, no kidding. But it's not a tactical game, from what I understand. It's more of an action-based. Which... No, I, I don't think it is. Yeah. Which, I mean, I guess sort of makes sense for mechs. I mean, there really hasn't been a, a huge... Uh, mech game that I can think of, at least recently. Maybe if there is, you can correct me, but uh, it seems like the last game I played that really had mechs was like the Xenoblade Chronicles and Chronicles X, you know? And even then, oh, they, yeah. were, they weren't like a huge part of the game. They were more so in X, but... Uh... Yeah. Oh, um... and uh, Hawken, of course. Stephen Hawken. <laughs> Stephen Hawking, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that for oh, well, what about Titanfall? Does that count? Oh, yeah, Titanfall. Duh, well, never mind. I'm stupid. I, that's it. I totally forgot about it, even though I praised that game a couple weeks ago. But no, Titanfall <laughs> 2 is excellent. Must yeah, play. The... But yeah, that was game... not at all at Tokyo Game Show. <laughs> they no, did not announce no. a sequel to it or anything like that. No. Yeah, EA has nothing to do with that event, usually. <laughs> no, usually, no, no. But uh, yeah, Left Alive looks interesting so far. I mean, like I said, not a whole lot has been said about it other than that it's a mech action game. Which, hey, I'm down for that. Right, right. Now it's time to take a break for everything that people wanted to talk about, and let's talk about the news nobody cares about! The news that nobody cares about, because somebody's got to talk about it. Might as well be me, even though you guys don't care to hear about it. So speaking of Tokyo Game Show, 
there was another game announced at the Tokyo Game Show. Now, have you ever played Niku Asumi? Um, no. Okay, well, I guess play is kind of giving it a little too much. Uh, but anyways, it's a mobile phone game where you have, like, these little cats that visit your house, and you place nice little things like, you know, food and toys and cat bedding and things like that, and the cats will visit as you improve on it, and they'll start showing up. And of course, it beats things up with some microtransactions and whatnot. Now, something that people have been wanting this whole entire time for Nico Itsuni, this game that you don't play, it's more of a game where you just occasionally... Feed the pets and, and visit them and see what they're doing and stuff like that. It's not really a game. It's more of a distraction. Well, somebody had the bright idea to bring this to the PlayStation VR. Oh. Why? Why? Yeah. So I guess you could pop your VR headset in for two minutes, see what the cats are doing, and then get out of it. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Most definitely, of course, you know, we got to see more Metal Gear Survive 2. Which... Oh, we did? Yeah. I couldn't remember that. Well, that's because nobody cares about it. <laughs> well, yeah, go figure. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, it's just been a total uh, shit show with that. But there was something I did kind of care about, uh, which I, I just didn't have time to talk about a news topic. But they are... Konami is bringing back Zone of the Enders, the second runner, and they are going to make a VR experience out of it, which is really nice. But if you're not a VR gamer, you can also play it in up to 4K in its classic third-person style camera, which is Gosh. really nice, you know. So I'm really looking forward to that. Have you ever played uh, Zone of the Enders, either of them? I played the first one. Yeah, I actually had never played the second one. But I cannot wait to check this out. You know, I think with the whole Konami thing, you know, it is what it is, you know. But I think they're trying to make steps to improve over their disastrous 2015 and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, no, that's something I can support, though, because at least, you know, that's a good thing. Oh, yeah, most certainly. Most certainly, indeed. So, another thing that I found was really interesting, or actually not at all interesting, I should say, because it's news nobody cares about. So, if you happen to be playing Clash Royale on mobile phones, you'll probably be happy to hear that there is Quest coming to this game. Yes, so you'll have even more time to waste playing Clash Royale, which, I'll admit, it's not the worst looking game for a mobile phone. It does have some interesting ideas to it. Um, I don't know if you're really familiar with it. It's kind of like a weird strategy slash tower defense slash, uh, I guess MOBA, but not like with multiple people. It's just one on one, but it has kind of some of the similar ideas to them. And no, it's kind of interesting, but I, at this point, I don't really care about mobile phone games. It just seems like everything, everything has been done and I haven't seen like a truly original mobile phone game in quite a while. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's it's too much. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I it's just weird because, like, if you look at the uh, download statistics on, like, Google Play and um, the App Store and iPhone and whatnot, you see, like, these games have, like, 50 million, 100 million, 500 million downloads. And I guess everybody plays them, but I don't. And it's not like something that you often will witness other people doing because they're just out doing their own thing on their cell phone, you know. I don't usually look at other people's cell phones unless it just happens to be in my view. You know what I mean? So it's like, when do people actually play these games? Do they even actually play them? Do people just think, oh, that looks cool, and they download it, and they never touch the app? I've done that with so many freaking games. So I imagine uh... that's got to be a normal thing. Probably. I mean, I've done it with one game. I can't even remember the name of it. <laughs> right, right, yeah. And, of course, uh, we got Final Fantasy IX now, which that's that's actually nice to hear. But something I thought that was really stupid is that people are complaining about um, getting one of the trophies in the game where you have to do a jump rope thing 1,000 times. Like, there's a jump rope mini game. 
Oh, I remember that. You have to uh, do the jump rope 1,000 times without tripping, which, of course, people bitched about it. And I'm sure they'll eventually patch it and change the number to, like, 200 times or something that's a little more reasonable. Uh, Which, I mean, it sounds like a lot still. But um, that being said, you know, people are complaining about, oh, I'm never going to get a platinum trophy. Well, it's a PS1 game, people. Did you even care about trophies back then? (laughs) No. (laughs) So... Why care about that news? You know, it's it is what it is, I suppose, right? Yeah, I don't know. I know um Final Fantasy X has a trophy like that too, where if you go to the Thunder Plains, you have to dodge the thunder like a certain amount of times and it's like really ridiculous and stupid. But hey, whatever. I mean, if you're gonna put several dozen hours in a game, why not add a couple more dozen to get a, get one single trophy? Why not? <laughs> yeah, and it's a bronze too, so it's like the fuck. <laughs> oh, really? Is it just a bronze? I thought it was a gold from what I read. Well, m- well, maybe it's a gold. I don't, I don't remember, but I just remember I was like, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, I just don't really care, you know. <laughs> but you know what? That's all the time we've got for the news that nobody cares about because somebody's got to report that news, and it might as well be me for them YouTube and iTunes clicks but at the same time nobody cares about it so you guys probably just fast forwarded through that segment (laughs) so there is um a couple of stories that i want to talk about these are kind of like some of the main discussion points uh so they just announced uh toys r us it's official they are going to go bankrupt uh they have uh, began bankruptcy filings and apparently from understand they owe Five billion dollars, which holy crap! I had no idea. Shit. <laughs> that how 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 come you guys waited this long to go bankrupt? Like, we'll wait until we get to the five billion territory before we announce this shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I'm pretty sure the creditors would have cut you off a long time ago. So how you guys were able to still uh, get that much going on is is beyond me. It really is. But apparently, they're still operating as is, at least for the time being. Uh, They have to repay, I believe, $400 million within the next year uh, as part of the uh, debt that they have. Basically, just to kind of stay afloat of the debt, which that's terrible, you know. Yeah, that's... And, uh, (laughs) you know, it, it, it... this has been happening to a lot of retail stores, I noticed. Uh, Kmart's been having some trouble, of course. Radio Shack went kaput. Um, you know, all kinds of stuff like that's going on. But Toys R Us is unique in that they, unlike unlike these, a lot of these other people, they had a niche that they have capitalized on for quite a long time. You know, they really have done well in the toy sector. But for whatever reason, they're just not making it meat anymore you know I, I i have a couple of theories on it uh but what, what's your take on this um you know as it is like in some aspects i'm not like too surprised because for the longest time like even around here back when like the dollar rate was not fucked up and shit like toys r us was always like really like overpriced compared to like every other place you can get that mm-hmm. Well, like, that's definitely be- one theory I've been hearing. I've heard that they are definitely overpriced compared to a lot of other places. Yeah, like a lot of like toys that you'd see at Walmart or Zellers back when Zellers was a thing around here. Um, you know, they were when they they had stuff that were at both places or all three of them. They were they were always a lot more, and also games too were also kind of overpriced as well, like right. compared to like EB and stuff. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, price is always something that people are going to look at when it comes to shopping. That is, of course, a factor. But I think that with that <laughs> higher price, they do kind of offset it a bit because they actually do have a lot of exclusive toys. Like, they have yeah, exclusive that's... Lego sets and things like that. Even back in the day, they used to have exclusive video game releases. I remember seeing, like, a couple of original Xbox games that said that they were Toys R Us exclusive. I'm like, wow, that's kind of weird. Uh, there, one of them I think it was like called Sketch or something. It's like a game where you play as a mouse or something like that. That's kind of interesting. Oh, I never that. Um, yeah, but I mean, that being said, 
you know, it's not just a price, but you also have to factor in that it's a store that literally just sells, it's designed to sell one type of merchandise, and that is toy-related entertainment, which, you know, can also include video games and um, various electronic items and things like that, you know, just different ways to entertain your kids, you know, but it's like a store that's not really designed to sell to anybody besides kids and, I guess, hardcore toy collectors, of course, it's got to have the latest G.I. Joe or Hot Wheels or whatever. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, there's always going to be that segment of the market, but they can still be they can still get their toys off Amazon and uh, Walmart and all that good stuff, too. So it's like that niche is really rapidly depleting and they never really kept up with certain things. Like when it comes to electronics related items, like I said, they still represent some video game related stuff, but they didn't really get too much into other stuff like tablets and computers and things like that. You know, like uh, they, they didn't really get too much into that. Um, same with movies. I mean, you get you can get some movies, but it's kind of underrepresented. Underrepresented, I would say. Yeah, I don't remember seeing a movie at the uh, Toys R Us ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I it, when last time I was there, I didn't see any, but I saw a retail archaeology episode. And they actually, you know, he actually went in and explored Toys R Us. It's a really good channel, by the way. I highly recommend Retail Archaeology. But mm -hmm. um, he actually showed where they had movie displays and various things like that. Uh, I guess another problem they had is Babies R Us is not doing very well. Because yeah, when, I heard about that. Which, I mean, when I, when I think of Toys R Us, I think of, like, the entertainment side of it. But it does have that other element, you know, where you can buy diapers and baby formula and, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Things that you would need for your infants to young toddlers, I suppose. Uh, but, um, yeah. you know, again, it's like, do, do you go there to get your kid a toy and get some diapers and stuff like that? Or do you just go to Target where you can get all that shit plus everything else you're going to get anyways? You know, I think that's what it ultimately boils down to. Consumers... They want a convergent economy where they can go to one place to get everything, or at least get most of the things that they need. And then, yeah. you know, Toys R Us, I mean, they could have been that place where you go for your specialty stuff, but they're just not really making that impact right now. No. Um, actually, one thing I, I remember that you reminded me of is... Um... When GameStop, when they actually tried to have a, a movie stop. I don't remember that at all. Oh, you don't? I, well, it was like a really small thing that happened. It really didn't last long at all, and it was yeah. like very limited. I'm guessing it was like a test but, you like know, a test thing, I guess. They're testing out the waters on that. Yeah, it was like, because I don't know, like when I think of Toys R Us and then Babies R Us, you know, it did it, 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 it me of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most certainly. Uh, yeah, that's definitely something good to point out there, I would say. But, uh, yeah, I mean, GameStop's another one in, in particularly, but they do have the used economy that they can kind of kick back on. Because as long as people want to still buy physical games, I think there'll still be a place for GameStop. They might have to downsize and things like that, but, uh, you know, there's still going to be a market for that kind of stuff. That's stuff that... Uh, you know, it's pure speculation and profit-driven. You know, they can make a lot of money if they make the right sales. But if they yeah. have problems selling stock, obviously they're they're taking a big risk and whatnot. But uh, Toys R Us doesn't have anything like that. That's something maybe they need to consider doing, because used toy collecting is starting to get up in popularity. That might be something they need to take a look at. Yeah, they. Trade in toys to get newer stuff, all that. Right, and then you know they can they can sell some of these classic figures that probably used to sell for like five bucks, and might go for like fifty now or something like that. You know, and they give a person like maybe a ten dollar trade credit or something like that. Maybe they don't know what's worth. That's kind of how GameStop made their bank. I don't know. Maybe they need to look at avenues like that. Uh, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, I mean worked for them yeah i guess i guess it's not as uh, predictable as like a video game so at the same time 
I mean, yeah. with games, you have a natural cycle. The game starts at this price. It remains this price for a little while. It goes on sale. It goes down over time. Demand, you know, like the demand and, and everything like that is something that's very predictable, more so than toys. You know, toys, uh, the demand's all over the place sometimes with these things. You know, they, you know, there's a lot of major products that don't ever take off. And then there's some things that have, like, little promotion that take off out of nowhere, like the fidget spinners, man. And those things <laughs> came out of nowhere. And then they yeah. were everywhere, and now they're dead again, but, you know. It's kind of a rough market. Oh, it is. It is. Because I've, um, I know the, one of the stores around my area, he's a game store slash a, uh, a used toy store, and... Yeah, a lot of things can get kind of nutty from what I've um, what I've talked to him about random shit. Mm -hmm. And of course, they can get into other stuff too, comics, video games. You know, they can kind of integrate that stuff. Maybe go into more entertainment in general, as opposed to being mainly geared at, at, on that aspect of it. Hmm. But maybe they don't even have the capital to even risk something like that. You know, they're just kind of hanging in there and see what they could do. Maybe they're hoping for somebody to buy them out, I would assume. Yeah, maybe that could be it. I don't know who would buy them, though. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, why don't we go ahead and wrap things up? We're going to get into kind of our last little topic here. Uh, this was something I actually wanted to talk about a bit since I saw the trailer today. Uh, for the new Tomb Raider movie, which uh, I didn't e I didn't even know until the other day that they were making a new Tomb Raider movie. This kind of came out of nowhere, at least to me. Oh, same here. But uh, but from what I've seen so far, this movie looks really promising. Like, I mean, I know it's it's really hard to believe that because we've seen the same old song and dance when it comes to a uh, video game being translated to a movie. And it often doesn't go very well. But, oh. <laughs> um, but you know, this new Tomb Raider looks really sweet. Um, at least if you're a fan of the uh, more recent Tomb Raider games, like the uh, 2013 Tomb Raider more specifically. Uh, where they kind of borrowed from Uncharted after Uncharted borrowed from them and kind of did their own thing. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> But anyways, this movie does look really nice, and I'm re really interested in um, what I've seen so far. Now, of course, this is just an early trailer. This is the, only the first trailer. They could, you know, we when we find out more, it, it could end up looking very bad. But the first trailer was cut very well. Um, I would definitely say they did some good editing work. They revealed enough of the story to let you know kind of what's going on a little bit, but not reveal too much like some movie trailers do where you can guess the whole plot of the movie just by watching the trailer. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, at the same time, you know, you, you can see like various little nods. Um, there's little scenes that they show that mimic what happened in the 2013 game. So it seems like they're taking the source material very seriously. Um, I guess this Alicia Vikander... I've actually watched Ex Machina with her oh. in it, and that was a really good movie. I highly recommend it if you're into kind of sci-fi, artificial intelligence type stuff. Um, yeah, I haven't seen that one, but I've heard about it. It is excellent. I highly recommend checking that movie. I think you can probably stream it off Netflix or uh, something like that at this point, though. It's not it, for whatever reason. It wasn't like a, a big success. You know, it was it was an indie movie. And I, oh. I'm guessing it did better than they thought it was going to, but at the same time, it wasn't like a huge success. It was like a moderate success, I would say. Overall. All right. Uh, but it was definitely a really fun movie to watch. Um, it had a little, really a lot of good, solid emotion. She plays as an android in that movie, and so she is now Laura Croft, which she doesn't necessarily fit the look of Laura Croft that much, at least traditionally speaking. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I would say Angelina Jolie definitely looked more like classic Laura Croft that we all know and love. Yeah. Uh, but um, but I, that being said, I think she um, does a really good job of mimicking more of the attitude uh, like we've seen in the more recent uh, Tomb Raider games, you know, and I think that's that's more important than looks yeah. here. Because I, I agree. Yeah, I think that's a little more important than looks as far as this. 
Because, I mean, you can compare that to, like, say, Ghost in the Shell, which I would argue that Scarlett Johansson actually looked a lot like the uh, character in the, in the mo original movie, right? Yeah. But, um, you know, obviously some people didn't think that that was the case as far as the way she acted, that she, maybe, she, maybe that didn't work out so well. I haven't seen that yet. I, I really need to see it. I haven't seen it either. <laughs> but uh, but that being said, I, I'm really hyped for this. And I wanted to kind of talk about uh, other video game movies, you know, because there have been tons of them over the years. I mean, the very first one I can remember, at least that I know of, that exists, of course, was Super Mario Brothers, a movie. And uh, I'm sure there may have been something else before it. I, I just can't think of it right now. But, well, for uh, live action, uh, I think that was the first, or yeah. at least one of them. But I know um, when it comes to animated stuff, there was a Mario movie in Japan. Okay, well, there's anime, of course. I would assume that, yeah, there's probably a couple animes out there that are probably based on video games and whatnot, you know, that came up before. Maybe even live action. But that was like the first big one. That's the first one that everybody knew about. And we all know that that didn't turn out too great. <laughs> it, <laughs> oh, at yeah. the very least, it's arguable that it's not very faithful to the source material at all. <laughs> was Dennis Hopper in the game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there have uh. been a ton of video game based movies since then. It seemed like that movie kind of started things off. And for a little while, they were popular. Then they kind of went away. There's always, like, these waves when it comes to video game movies. Like, they kind of come and go every few years, you know? Oh, it's true. I've noticed. Um, I mean, we had Assassin's Creed, uh, wait, late last year, I guess. And then, then there's movie. Warcraft. Oh, yeah, Warcraft. Yep, mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, so I wanted to kind of talk about some of our favorite video game movies, some of our least favorite video game movies, you know, kind of have a little discussion uh, right. world around that. I mean, Super Mario Brothers the movie was the first one that I personally seen. I kind of liked it as a kid, but I, then again, I was like 11. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I imagine my opinion might not be the same now. Oh, probably not. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what, what, what was your thoughts on it, though? Um, or did you watch it recently? Or Believe it or not, how I first watched the Mario movie was because uh, I remember I heard about it because you got to remember that movie came out like the same year I was born. So, OK, you know, I didn't like I wasn't hyped for it or anything like that. But I remember looking at the back of a comic because I saw know what movies were back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyways, like I remember I, I seen a comic with the advertisement of the Mario movie. I'm like, oh, this was a thing that was made. Yeah. And then. And then, like, a little few weeks later, I seen it on TV, because, you know, they usually do that every now and then. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm going to watch it, and... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, they actually had a Blu-ray release recently for it. I'm well, actually curious to see how much that goes for. I think the reason why they even, like, bothered with a Blu-ray release is because I think that movie kind of has a cult following in the sense that, you know, it's so dumb, it's it's funny kind of thing. Which, you know, I kind of understand that, because it is a pretty mm -hmm. kooky movie. Yeah. I, it's, <laughs> I mean, unless you're a huge fan, it's not worth picking up on Blu-ray. I just looked up some of the prices on Amazon. U.S. price-wise, you can get the DVD copy for 488 which ain't too bad. You know, that's that's okay, I suppose. Um, but the Blu-ray release is 20 bucks. I mean, oh. no way I'm paying that. Not for a Blu-ray of an old movie. It's not that great. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see if the Blu-ray version is even worth it, you know? Like, if they actually even did a, a decent job with the conversion. Because some of those Blu-rays of older movies don't turn out that great. Like, they almost feel like they're just up-converting it or some something like that. They're not really doing much to enhance them. But, uh, yeah, sometimes that's the case. But uh, on some others, like I have the uh, Blu-rays for uh, Alien and Aliens and, uh, you know, the original Terminator. Yeah. And those are excellent transfers, man. They look beautiful. Uh, obviously Terminator 2, but by then I think the um, film technology and whatnot was cer certainly a lot better. They were able to preserve things a lot better, so they probably don't have to do quite as much work starting with like the 90s movies. So I don't know, maybe it'll look okay. 
uh, because of that, you know, being it was a 90s movie, but I imagine it was a low-budget movie compared to something like Terminator 2, so. But, yeah. Uh, I mean, of course there was that. I think the first one that I kind of sort of enjoyed uh, would have been the Street Fighter movie. With, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> with uh, Van Damme. Which, I mean, I think I mainly just enjoyed it because Van Damme. <laughs> you know, I love uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, yeah. I really don't remember much besides him and uh, Raul Julia playing as... M. Bison. Uh, M. Bison, yeah. I really don't remember much else. That was like one of his last movies, if I'm not mistaken, actually. Yeah, it was the last movie he made before he died. And the weird thing was is that, that he actually dedicated that movie to his kids, which is kind of... Um, like, it's touching, but it's also kind of weird because, you know, that movie was all bombed. Yeah. And not not just that, but also the timing, too, of that, you know, too. I mean, that... I mean, I imagine that... <laughs> you know, that couldn't feel very good for them, you know. They can't... I, I'm sure they can't really watch that. Or maybe they can. Maybe they... Maybe it's almost like a... Uh, like a homage of some kind, you know, like, to their memory. Yeah, I don't know weird to think about yeah but i would say most people would certainly agree that the first video game movie that was worth watching uh for the most part at least is mortal kombat uh maybe oh, not so yeah. much maybe not so much annihilation but oh, uh no. <laughs> but the original mortal kombat did a pretty decent job Given that Mortal Kombat is kind of a story light game anyways, I think that's one reason why this movie worked, was because they had kind of the creative freedom to explore it, because it wasn't like a super story heavy game. There was some lore in the game and in the instruction manual and stuff like that, and I think they did the uh, cartoon show. I don't know if you remember the cartoon show, really. No, uh, I, I do remember it. <laughs> but, um, you know, they, they really had a... A great way to explore that creative freedom and they did so in a way that was better than Street Fighter you know Street Fighter had some kind of weird things like even though like John Claude for example um, he was not guile at least the way we think of guile he didn't have that giant yellow spiking hair where was the sonic booms at you know <laughs> but Mortal Kombat was pretty well represented I would say uh, overall I mean it's not like a masterpiece of a movie but if you're just looking for a video game movie that uh, is, is good, I, I highly recommend watching that. Yeah, no, I think uh, Mortal Kombat was at least enjoyable for, like, the fans of, the, like, the game series. But also had some just some regular fun other shit. It's a mindless fun. Yeah, it was enjoyable for the fans, yeah, most certainly. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of weird because, like I said, we keep having these renaissances where we have video game movies for a while and then they go away. And that's what kind of happened, like, after the Mortal Kombat movies. Like, they kind of disappeared for a little bit. You know? That's just kind of weird. I mean... Yeah. I guess they saw, like, what happened to Mario and Street Fighter, and maybe they were still working on the Mortal Kombat stuff. But, like, people probably kind of, like, stepped away at that point with uh, doing more. <laughs> They're like, no, man, this ain't working out very good. Yeah, for some reason, they still pumped out uh, Resident Evil movies. Oh. Oh, shoot, you know what? I forgot. Before um, before Street Fighter, even, there was a freaking uh, Double Dragon movie. Now, that was a disaster. I, I actually that have seen that. <laughs> yeah, that was terrible, man. Not as <laughs> bad as the cartoon show, but wow. Like, dang. And that was a low-budget movie, and it bombed at the box office. It only got, like, $2 million, which is just <laughs> insane. When you think about it, Mario had $20 million, and that was a movie that got panned heavily. Street Fighter made almost $100 million. This is U.S. box releases, of course. And then, of course, Mortal Kombat actually secured more than $100 million. So, you know, you saw, like, and then it's Double Dragon barely makes $2 million dollars on a eight million dollar budget this is a disaster but you know what i when it comes to double dragon i i don't i don't make it a secret when it comes to double dragon i think double dragon's kind of a fluke overall of a series i'm amazed that 
it yeah. has been around for as long as it has and has as many fans as it has because you have maybe three good games in the series out of all the games four I guess if you want to count the Neo Geo fighting game maybe but that's I don't really think of that as a double dragon game no, I, I do agree that the series is kind of wonky, because, I mean, you got, like, the first one, the second one, and... Neon. <laughs> yeah, and, and then you got Double Dragon Advance, too. I wasn't oh, yeah, even I really, uh... That. See, when I was thinking of that, I wasn't even counting the arcade ones, because they're not that great. Although I did like the first arcade game better than the NES one. Um, I was talking about two for the NES. That was, like, one of my favorite Double Dragons. And then Neon, of course, and Double Dragon Advance. And then I kind of like Super Double Dragon 4, which a lot of people crap on that one. It is a slow playing game, but it's still good. But anyways, so we stopped with the movie games for a while. Then for some weird reason, we have a Wing Commander one out of nowhere in between like this and the next renaissance of game movies. Um, yeah. Which I thought that was kind of weird because Wing Commander was um i mean it's popular on pcs but it was not really known otherwise i mean we had a couple wing commander games i think on the super nintendo the 3do but it was a series that <laughs> didn't really it didn't really stick around on consoles but, yeah no not not really i didn't even i never even heard about wing commander until like way later on mm-hmm but uh, one thing that's interesting about Wing Commander, it is actually directed by the creator of the Wing Commander games, uh, Chris Roberts. He's always wow. had a fascination with Hollywood, with movies and things like that. And if you play some of the Wing Commander games, you can kind of see that. Uh, but the movie itself didn't pan out very well. Uh, I'm not sure why that was, but... Yeah. I've never seen it, so I don't. I don't know. Unfortunately, yeah. I haven't seen it myself. But uh, I think that's really interesting that he actually directed it. So I imagine if you're a huge fan of the games, maybe you can get some enjoyment out of it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but then of course know. we get into the next Renaissance of movies, which brings us back to the topic of Tomb Raider. Finally, because we had Laura Croft Tomb Raider with Angelina Jolie, and then Laura Croft Tomb Raider: The Cradle of Life that came out a little bit later. Um, those are pretty successful movies. They weren't necessarily reviewed very well by critics, but um, they weren't too bad. I mean, they... I actually kind of liked the first one, honestly. Yeah, they weren't too bad. I, I enjoyed them somewhat. Um, but, you know, actually, it seems like, from what I understand, the critics kind of liked the second one better, which is really interesting. Usually, the sequels don't do too well on those fronts, but... Uh, oh, but, weird. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, that being said, I mean, those weren't too bad. Uh, conversions, you know, I mean, uh, they definitely took some liberties, but yeah. And then, of course, we get to one of the worst video game <laughs> movies of all time, and the start of this, no. and the start of many bad video game movies. I kind of skipped over Resident Evil, which that technically was started to a lot of bad game movies too, but uh, that's another story. Um, though I'm talking about House of the Dead, oh, the Uwe Boll classic. <laughs> <laughs> yes the mastermind himself making video game movies now there was one interesting thing about this one is it actually imposed footage of the games into the movie yeah I remember that but it did it in such a haphazard way it was stupid the way it did it I know <laughs> <laughs> oh geez man uh, what what you think about the Resident Evil movies? Let's talk about those for a second. Um, okay, the live action ones I thought were yeah, that's what I'm talking eh. about the live action ones specifically. Yeah, yeah, I thought they were kind of eh. like I didn't think they were like the worst thing to ever exist, but they weren't like really good either. I don't know. I thought they were just kind of just mediocre, honestly. Right, right. I mean, the first one I kind of liked. The first one I thought it was interesting. Obviously, it um, took a lot of liberties with the storyline and whatnot, but I thought it was cool that they were actually kind of paralleling it and having their own character to it. And then, of course, we got to Apocalypse afterwards, which was based on Resident Evil 2. And it was kind of cool seeing those parallels kind of mesh up with the games. 
Because you start to see that with that particular movie. But that movie sucked. So <laughs> that was the end of my uh, Resident Evil experience. I could not get into Apocalypse. It was just so corny. Like, I mean, the first Resident Evil movie was pretty corny as it was already. But um, I don't know. Like, it, it seemed like that Apocalypse went too much into that realm. I yeah, I don't remember it that well. Mm-hmm. So, um, that takes us to another one, which, according to some of the stuff I see, is actually the worst reviewed video game movie of all time. Uh, Alone in the Dark? Which was another, yeah, Alone in the Dark, Uwe Boll, again. <laughs> always screwing things up. I mean, it had a recipe for disaster from the start. First of all, you're starring Christian Slater in it. Which, I don't have anything wrong with Christian Slater. He's a good actor sometimes. But if he's in your movie, that pretty much guarantees a 90% chance that it's going to flop. <laughs> and not be that great. Um, plus, you know, like... Okay, there was one really good thing about Alone in the Dark. It actually had a pretty kick-ass soundtrack. Like it, had yeah. like, a, it had, like, a bunch of, like, heavy metal and death metal bands and stuff like that in it, which was awesome. Yeah, as it's, it's cool as that is, it doesn't really fit the movie, though. Yeah, it didn't fit the movie at all. It, I mean, it, the soundtrack was worth a look, but the movie itself sucked, okay? <laughs> yeah, and I'm not even going to touch yeah. any of the other Uwe Boll movies like Blood Rain or Postal or... Uh, I actually uh, thought Blood Rain was worse, honestly. Mm, yeah. And well, it, so, it would be uh, better, but it really was not a better movie, I suppose. You know, it was... Uh, it was what it was. Also, Postal, I gotta be honest, is okay. Well, I've heard mixed things about it. I heard from some people that it was kind of like a funny South Parkish parody. Yeah, yeah, that that's pretty accurate. It's a lot like it, okay, it's not as like witty as South Park, but it does have like a lot of like you know dark, offensive humor to it. Mm -hmm. Which that's pretty exactly what the game is. So. Right, right, I gotcha. I never actually um, even bothered watching it because I tried playing Postal 2. These people are telling me, oh, Postal 2 is so hilarious. It's such a crazy game. And I just hate it. It plays okay. terribly. Yeah, if you hate, if you don't like the game, then yeah, you probably wouldn't want to be either because yeah, the movie is like, you know... Dumb offensive humor like that. Yeah, most certainly. Um, now, one of my favorite video game movies. This might surprise some people, um, but I actually kind of enjoyed the video game adaptation of Silent Hill. Yes. Silent Hill was actually really well done, at least in terms of the game. Now, in terms of the movie itself, yeah, it definitely has some problems. You know, uh, there is definitely some weird acting in some places and uh, the editing wasn't the best you know like they could have done some scenes better most certainly but it did a pretty good job with the source material uh, which is one thing that I liked about it and uh, uh, at the same time it kind of had its own nice little story to it as well and they even did an excellent job of representing certain characters like Pyramid Head in it yeah I thought that was since you know Pyramid Head was not in the first game, in that much, you know, replace Harry with Heather, I think her name was. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I most certainly. But, you know, I mean, the, the sequel wasn't that good. Revelation, it was, eh. Uh, I know. Well, that one was bad, but like I said, I'll just stick to the first. Mm. Um,. Of course, we had the Hitman movie, which that wasn't too great. They've, it's kind of weird. They keep having Hitman movies. Like, they had Hitman, and they had Hitman Agent 47. I heard about that one. Yeah. Which, um... It's kind of tough to say which one's better. I imagine the newer one's probably better. Maybe. But I, it's tough to say. Maybe not. Because they both those movies had good actors in them playing as Agent 47, but they're not actors that I would think of as Agent 47. I don't know who would play a good Agent 47, come to think of it. Mm -hmm. that, would be a, that would be a tough challenge, I would say. 
You know what? I think Jason Statham would do a good job. Um, at oh, least yeah, as far as go. the demeanor. I don't know if he really has, like, the voice and stuff like that. No. no but, not the uh, I mean, he would be good at being a hitman <laughs> because he does a lot of good uh, stunts and things like that in his movies. And, uh, you know, he's already bald most of the time anyway, so it's not like they have to... They probably don't have to worry about a bald cap. He could just shave his head completely instead of having that stubble or whatever, you know, for for a few weeks <laughs> while they shoot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there you go. That works. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, there was the Max Payne movie with uh, Mark Wahlberg. What do you think of that? I actually never seen that one. That was kind of a really weird take on Max Payne. But you I know, guess it, it, it did somewhat utilize the source material good at the same time. But I don't know. It was just weird. I just can't, well, that, I couldn't get over that one. That one wasn't that great, but it wasn't like bad either. It was, a, it was like middle of the road to me. Yeah, because I don't know. I remember when I heard about it, I was thinking like, man, you know, Max Payne would actually lend itself well to a film because, you know, the games, at least like from when I played the first one years ago, I was like, yeah, this is like a lot like a movie almost. Yeah, most certainly. Now, this next one I want to talk about is it's kind of a weird ad adaptation because it actually kind of follows the game to some degree. Like a lot of the basic tenets are followed. But at the same time, it has a lot of liberties, um, partly when it comes to the actual actor that they use, because I did not expect this casting choice at all. Uh, that was uh, Prince of Persia Sands of Time with Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh. You know, like, I like Jake Gyllenhaal as an actor. I think it was a really bad casting choice, though, so, uh, with that movie. But that being said, the movie is still pretty good. That, that is one of my favorite video game adaptations, was Prince of Persia Sands of Time. And, yeah, I remember that, that one being good. And, I mean, a lot of that, it, it does, a lot of that does have to do with that I'm a huge fan of of Prince of Persia Sands of Time, the video game. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, if you, you had other game movies you want to talk about, because honestly, I have not seen, other than um, Silent Hill Revelation, I haven't seen any other video game movies after that. Um, I, I haven't watched the newest Resident Evils or Need for Speed, Warcraft, Assassin's Creed, none of those. They made Need for Speed into a movie? Yeah, that um actually uh the, the guy that plays is Jesse Pinkman, uh Aaron uh what's his freaking name? Uh um Aaron something. He plays in that movie. Oh okay. it's pretty much like a Fast and the Furious ripoff from what I understand. I heard it wasn't oh. that bad, but it's like just watch Fast and the Furious if you want Fast and the Furious is what I pretty much heard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get you on that. Yeah. Um and you know what's one um movie i know we didn't talk about was um final fantasy spirits within yeah yeah the family of fantasy spirits within that was actually an interesting one for some reason that's not listed oh i'm looking at live action films okay that's probably why i didn't see that um but yeah you know what we can talk about some animated ones of course spirits within was interesting because yeah. the animation on that was beautiful but the plot was... I don't know. I didn't really care for the plot. It wasn't that very good. I actually kind of like that movie. Now, the plot is, like, not the best, but I thought it was at least decent. And yeah. also, I know a lot of people complain about that movie because, you know, oh, it doesn't have cloud in it, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. I mean, like, I don't think the movie had to connect to the games because it's not like the games connect to each other unless, you know, X2... 13 2, you know, all that mm. shit. But Oh, yeah, most definitely. But I don't know. I thought it was an entertaining movie at the very least. Obviously, I, it's not the best. But I got you. Okay, that makes stuff. sense, kind of. Um, so, I really enjoyed Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. Even though I will admit that movie is kind of fan fiction. <laughs> It is, but like, but it's a really well done movie. Uh, I think it really does add to that overall story. Um, from what I remember of it, because it's 
been a while since I've seen it. I remember it being pretty okay. Like, you know, like I thought the action scenes in it were pretty cool. You know, the, you know, the animation of it was pretty great. And, um, what was one thing? I remember, uh, one thing I remember thinking was, you know, it kind of like defeats like the main purpose of the ending of, uh, um, of the of the game because it just means that like oh Sephiroth can just keep coming back like unlimited Dracula. Oh yeah, I totally get what you're saying there. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of other animated movies, of course. There was all the Pokemon movies. I know those were popular for a while. It was kind of weird because they just like stopped making them after that. So I don't know if maybe. Uh, they Apparently s- they have like 16 now. Do they really? Have that I think many? so. Well, I know they but- have like a bunch in Japan, but. You know what I mean? Like, ones that were kind of, like... M- oh, you mean, like, theatrical release ones? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Like, they kind of yeah, stopped on that. They, like, they're kind of more, like, direct-to-video and stuff like that now. Yeah, no, that's true, yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant, like, movies in, like, general. Then, yeah, they have, like, a shitload. But when it comes to theatrical ones, yeah, they they, they stopped that shit. Right, right. Uh, there was the Ratchet & Clank movie. Well, that was a stinker. I never seen it, but uh, I want to play. Worth, the game. It's not even worth watching on Netflix, man. It's terrible. It is, ah, uh, man. Yeah, I mean, it does have some of the humor elements of the games, but the delivery is so dry compared to the games. It just, I don't know. It's not very good. I mean, you can probably just play the Ratchet and Clank video game on PS4, which has some clips from the movie, and you'll be fine. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do because I still need to get that game. Yeah, I actually found that Mario movie you're talking about came out in 1986. Uh, the yep. Japanese one you're talking about. It was based after one game because there was no other Mario game that came out at that time. <laughs> yeah, which actually came out at the same exact time apparently as a movie based on Star Soldier. Ah. Huh. Same exact day. That's really interesting. Yeah, that is pretty cool to know actually. Yeah. But, I mean, there's tons of other, there's, there's tons of animated ones. One I really want to see, I just actually saw it at Walmart the other day. They have uh, one based on Bayonetta. Oh, yeah, i never seen that, but I've heard about it, and, yeah, I've been curious to check that one out. Yeah, because, I mean, I really enjoyed Bayonetta. I wouldn't mind seeing, I think that would be a good anime type thing. I think that might be a good translation. But, no, I think a lot of, like, video games, movies usually are a lot better yeah oh there was also i you know i totally forgot i watched king's clay final fantasy 15 did you watch oh, that two did you watch it yeah i did what'd you think of it oh uh, I, thought, I, I thought it was like yeah, yeah obviously like it would have been nice if we can actually get into the game but you know like for what it was it was a pretty cool movie right right i got gotcha. you you know, I just, I could not get into that movie, man. I actually fell asleep a couple of times trying to watch it. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a good note. Yeah, that's a bad sign for sure, but, I mean, it is what it is, I suppose. Yeah, no, it's definitely not, like, but, you know, I thought it was, like, pretty entertaining enough. I, I thought it was kind of um, weird that, that uh, Sean Bean plays uh, King Regis. Because, you know, he doesn't even play him in the game. Yeah, I know, that's really weird. They changed the voice actors and such for a lot of people that are in there. Yeah, and then Luna Freya was voiced by some chick from Game Lena of Her Name. Lena I think. Yeah, that's it. There we go. And the, there was Aaron Paul. Aaron Paul, that's his name. He was in the movie, too. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, there's tons of other ones. Uh, I remember the Dead Space anime, which actually wasn't too bad. I need to see that one, but I've heard it was really good. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it's not like a awesome one, but it's okay. It's no Castlevania, but it's it's decent. It's worth a look. Uh, Dante's Inferno. I've never seen that one, but I heard it's kind of weird. EA is a company that I don't think about anime at all, but they have a couple of games on here. They also have a Mass Effect one, which is crazy. I know, I know they have uh, Dragon Age. Dragon Age? Oh yeah, they have a Dragon Age one too. An anime? Oh uh, yeah, an animated one, yeah. Oh, okay, I can't find it, but... Huh. 
And then, of course, we had on uh, Sci-Fi Channel, Red Faction Origins. I'm not even going to bother with that because Sci-Fi Channel. <laughs> you know, that's going to suck. Uh, we had Far Cry, of course. I mean, that was another Uwe Bowl classic. <laughs> I've never seen it, but I heard about it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Uh, Dead Rising. Okay, about they had the Dead Rising movies. I think you watch them for free on Crackle. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. Can't really imagine it being great, but you never know. Yeah. Um, other than that, I do remember, I don't know if you saw on YouTube, they used to have, like, those uh, Mortal Kombat, like, clips that they were showing. Oh, um, I know which one you're talking about. They did, it was uh, like a little mini-series. Um, I mean, it's not really a movie, but I guess if you combine them all together, it might add up to, like, a short movie, maybe? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about, it's like the Lunar series. Yeah, yeah, those were actually pretty well done, too. Yeah, I should actually watch that shit again. But, you know, I think, uh, I mean, is there any other ones you want to talk about? I think we covered quite a lot of them already. Um... No, I think we're pretty good, because I think we covered most of, like, the basic ones, and all, like, the ones that everyone knows about, and... You know, that so, kind of shit. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to say, probably my favorite. I, I would still have to probably say Silent Hill is probably my uh, favorite. At least for live action. And then if you want non-live action, at least from the ones I've seen, I really enjoyed Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. Alright. For me, yeah, I'd actually have to agree with you with live action with Silent Hill. I think that one is just, you know, one of the be the better ones. And as for animated... Huh. Hmm. I probably would say... Um... Eh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, wait, I can't, I can't think show. of one right now, but... Um... I know there's a few of them that, that I did like, it's just I gotta... Uh... Check here. Um... Eh, fuck it, I'll just say Pokemon the movie 2. <laughs> oh, the movie 2000, you mean? Yeah, because that one is one I used to love as a kid, and when I watched it a couple years ago, it still lives up to be a pretty decent movie, even though I don't give a shit about Pokemon anymore, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's got a lot of nostalgia to it, I guess. That makes sense. Yeah. Also, the movie had a really great soundtrack, too. <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah, I know, like, people like those Pokemon soundtracks and whatnot, so... But I just, I never got into it. I, I was just, I, I know, I felt that was too old by the time I did. Oh, yeah, because when Pokemon came out, like, you were about, uh, like, 13 or so? When the first Pokemon game came out, at least in North America, was that 98 that it came out originally, or? I think it was 96 or 7. I think 96 for Japan, but I think it came out a little bit later here. Might have been 97 it came out here. Yeah. And by then, I was 14 or 15, depending on when it came out. And um, I never, I didn't have a Game Boy. Oh yeah, there's and then, that's like the N64 ones. They kind of sucked. So you know they didn't play like the actual Pokemon games. So it was like kind of pointless. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I got gotcha. you. Pokemon Snap. Let's take pictures of the Pokemon in a Safari hunt. And then <laughs> Pokemon Colosseum. Oh, we can actually play actual Pokemon battles, but it's literally just the battles. Battles and mini games. Yeah, and the mini games <laughs> sucked. It was like a really crappy Mario Party. It's like, oh, yeah. we forgot to give you a full game, so we'll throw in a few Mario Party minigame rejects. Just to kind of tie you over a bit, make you not regret the purchase as much. Yeah, I used to like those ones as a kid, too, which is kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's all we've got time for. So you guys need to check out Bio Phoenix on YouTube. Um, you anywhere else besides YouTube, really? Do you do VidMe or, uh, Steamer or anything like that, or whatever the- No, uh, I don't have VidMe. Um, I do have a Discord channel, that, that that's just all discussion-based on, like, just kind of whatever. And... Is that something yeah. you want to share here, or...? Yeah, I, I can share it in there. I'll put a link in the description. Or, you'll put a link in the description. Okay, you'll have to send me that link, then. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, check out uh, Bio Phoenix. He's also on Twitter. No, and, not uh, anymore. <laughs> oh, you're not on Twitter anymore? 
No, I got rid of my Twitter, like, years ago, because I never used it. <laughs> I could have swore I saw you on Twitter the other day. Nope. Okay, well, never mind. I'm... That's what age does to you. Nah, it's all good. good. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I'd like to thank BioPhoenix for getting on the show. Uh, we've got some more guests coming up, and I hope to see you guys there. Uh, but till then, down Phoenix out. Yep, uh, hope you all have a great day and uh, take care. All right, good one.